everyone, welcome back to the workshop. I hope you're all doing well. Now in this video, I'm making a sailboat tiller. So something a little bit different. So a friend of mine recently got himself a sailboat and the tiller in the boat snapped. So the boat is over 40 years old. This is the original tiller and it snapped and he asked me would I be able to make him one? I said, no problem. So I set about making it the design slightly different, nicer to hold in hand, more uh, pretty to look at. So it's made from three species of wood. So we have Sapili, ash and a lovely walnut stripe down the middle. So we have that beautiful stripe down the middle. Shaped it a little bit differently so that it's much more comfortable and nicer to hold in hand. The original one is kind of narrow. It's more like a pickaxe handle or something like that. Um, it's not very comfortable, although it's done the job for 40 years. Hopefully this one will too. But this one is much nicer to hold in hand. Slightly different shape on the head of it as well. And it fits perfectly back into its existing bracket. And I also had to allow a recess for the auto helm bracket as well as this is a permanent fixture to the tiller so rather than forcing it on i put an actual recess in there as well so without further ado guys we'll get on and make a sail boat tiller really enjoy making pits for boats um, I would love to build an actual full boat one day. It would be like the ultimate woodworking project. But uh, yeah, I don't know a whole lot about boats, but I really enjoyed making this. So let's jump on and do it. Okay guys, let's take a look at what we're going to be doing here. Now this is the existing tiller of the boat and you can see it has snapped there right on where one of the bolt holes go through. And if you look at the wood, it's kind of gone punky or dozed off as we say. It's very spongy like this. Uh, timber has well gone past its use by date um, you know rot has set in so that's why it just weakened there and and snapped right there so we're going to replace this now, the original wood looks like ash to me if i'm not too much mistaken and generally these things can be made out of ash from the little bit of research that i've done again i'm no expert on boats this is outside of my wheelhouse to use a sailing pun but um yeah, we're going to try and make one. Now, what I want to do is make something a little bit nicer, um, a little bit more detail to it. So we're going to make a laminate piece. So I'm going to do a stripe down through it. So something similar to the guitar necks that I've built in the past. I'm going to actually make a stripe down the middle of this. So we're going to make it from Sapili. So the outsides are going to be Sapili. Then I'm going to have a center stripe of walnut and either side of that I'm going to have a, a nice white ash stripe. And I'm going to change the design just a little bit. So you know, it's a nice straight one. It flares a little bit at the end. That's just so your hand can sit here. It's nice to hold in hand. So we'll keep all those dimensions, but I'm just gonna put a little kind of a hook head on it. Just flare that head down a little bit, almost like a handle of an ax or something, that kind of thing. A little bit more of a flare to the head, and then we'll round over that end too. Um, just to give it a little bit more detail than what's on it. But the back part, we have to stick exactly to these dimensions. The bracket is a stainless steel bracket that this sits into, and it's not something that you can bend or distort too much. So we wanna work to these dimensions. So we can use this one as our template. So, like I said, we have Sapili for the main bulk of what we're going to do here. We're going to have a stripe of walnut and we're going to have two stripes of ash. Now, I've just been to the planar thicknesser and milled up this or a face and an edge of this so I can now take this to the um, table saw and rip these down. So let's do that. Get these ripped down to the dimensions that I want them to. Then we'll start thicknessing them down and then we're going to rip some tin strips of walnut and some tin strips of uh, ash and then we'll glue the laminate together. So let's do that. Okay guys, I've ripped all my boards down to 75 millimeters. Now I want to turn them on edge and rip my strips out of this. So I'm going to do this on the table saw. You get a beautifully clean cut from these frowed blades. Um, it's nearly smoother than it comes off my jointer. And because I'm taking it down to five mil, I don't want to pass this through my jointer because I have to laminate it to another board and the jointer can give you a little bit of tear out and stuff. So I'm going to try it, cut the strips out of this on my table saw. So I have a double uh, feather board set up here just to keep that pressed in as I'm pushing it through. And uh, I'm gonna use a push block to go over the top of the blade, keeping my hands and stuff out of the way. So let's rip these now. So I want two five mil strips of ash and one five mil strip of walnut.
Okay guys, so there's the laminations now cut. So I have my two ash pieces and I have my walnut strip for the middle. So they're gonna to go together like that, giving me a nice stripe detail down the center of the tiller. Now, I kind of maxed out the capacity of my little small um, job site saw there. So it was kind of stressing the motor a bit. So a better approach for me, the next time I might make one of these would be to run this through the bandsaw and then plane it back. So I'll have to glue one of these to a board and send it through the planer and cut it over then so I don't get sniped. But the planer can tear up small bits like this. So you need to fix them to an actual board and send them through. But definitely I feel that way would be a little bit safer because I was at the maximum capacity of my saw there and I felt I was stretching it. I mean, you're stretching things or pushing things, that's when accidents can occur so definitely next time through the bandsaw and through the planer thickness are but that's what it's going to look like now i want to thickness these two sides down these are way too thick so we need to take these down a good bit so i'm going to pass them through the planer now thickness them down and then we can glue this lamination together Okay guys, all the laminations are cut, ready to go. So I just took it to the bandsaw first, took 10 mil off. There's no point in turning 10 millimeters of sapili into sawdust. So I can use them for laminations later on. So it's just a case to glue this thing up. Now I'm gonna be using Type On 3 to do it. I've made loads of guitars and everything else from Type On 3. It's never ever delaminated on me once. It's also watertight. This will be covered with some sort of marine grade varnish as well. I have to do a bit of research on that as to the particular finish that I'm gonna use on this. I haven't decided yet, but again, Type On 3 will be perfect perfectly adequate for what I need here. So it's just a case of get this on and get it together. there we go we're all glued up it's always a bit of a panic when you're gluing things up um, i didn't clean the glue off my parallel jaw clamps the last time so i had a bit of trouble closing them up so let that be a lesson to me and to you guys always clean the glue off your clamps because uh, yeah, it gums up the mechanism and then makes them hard to close. And when you're in a bit of a panic trying to get things to glue together, especially when it's hot like this and that glue starts going off pretty quick, uh, yeah, you need to be moving. So that's all I glued up now. I can't fit any more clamps on. I think it's clamped up well enough. So nothing to do now, let that uh, set up, let the glue go off. I'm gonna leave it overnight. And then the fun start part, or the fun part starts when it comes to carving. That's the most enjoyable part. So it's glued up, let's move on. Okay guys, it's all glued up, it's out of the clamps, and I've just run it back through the planar thickness or just to get a perfectly square bit of stock again. And I've just cut the two ends off with the miter saw. So it's perfectly square all around. I can use these for my reference edges. Now, I've just glued the old one back together, stuck a bit of tape on it just so we can use this as a template. And I have now marked the top with the taper that I need. So if you can guys can see the two lines running down here. It's kind, of, it's kind of a double taper. So it tapers in to about here, then it straightens back out, then it flares back out again at the end. So what I've done was, I've just with the vernier calipers, I've picked points along it. I've marked those points along the top here and joined up those lines. I used my marking gauge to pull a center line down the whole piece that I can run down the middle of the walnut and I use that to mark out from both sides. That gave me my two lines down along it and I've just marked it out here as well. So we're gonna do most of the um, stock removal now on the bandsaw. There's not too much stuff to take off the end. That's just gonna be a bit of hand planing, but it's the end of this that is the critical part. So I'll just show you so I've just been to the boat. I went and got the bracket. So there's the tiller bracket itself. So that sits into the housing. It's a quite a snug fit. So if I can just get it in there. So that fits in there. There's a notch here that runs back against this stainless piece. The heel doesn't quite fit all the way in. There's a bit of a gap here. So I'll leave a little bit extra on my one, but it doesn't quite fit all the way in, but that's how it's held inside in there. 
and there's another piece that has to be able to fit on as well. So this is the auto tiller arm. So for the auto pilot, essentially, that bolts on there whenever you need it. So this piece is removable, so that comes on and off. So I have to just make sure that from this point back that it's very accurate and that these points can actually fit back on and this can all bolt back together. Down along here, as long as I keep it nice and straight and comfortable in hand, we should be good. So, that's all my reference points. Again, it's essentially just making a handle, so like making an axe handle or anything like that, it's just gonna be a lot of carving. So let's get the bulk of the material removed off with the bandsaw. So we'll go now and we'll take these two lines first, then we'll flip it this way and we'll carve the actual shape out. So let's do that. Okay guys, so we've removed the bulk of the waste now with the bandsaw. So I just want to establish a straight edge, a nice flat edge down the middle that I can walk to. So if you can think about this, even though it is curved, it has a straight line down the spine on both sides, down the middle as well. So on all four sides, I'm just going to plane down to get a nice straight line down the middle that I can work my curve off. And that should keep me nice and straight. So again, just hand plane now, a few strokes down the middle. When I get to the end here, when I'm starting to curve up, I'll use the Japanese saw rasp just to flatten that section out. And then we can begin to shape with the rasp and the spoke shaves. So just planed all four sides. So down the center of all four sides is a nice straight flat edge. Now I can use that as a reference to work to. So just roughly scribe the line down there. I know what I'm going to work back to. And I have my walnut strip, which is dead center of my piece as well. So now it's a case of the Japanese saw rasp. Uh, one of my favorite ever woodworking tools. I've say this every time I use it. I've made guitars, I've made handles for axes, for hammers, for everything with this. It's an absolutely great carving tool. For It's fantastic for removing stock pretty quickly and for carving, and it's ideal for doing jobs like this. So, again, this is just gonna be done by eye, by feel. Just try and round this over as best I can. Uh, just work to it, try and work to your center lines on both sides, remove it evenly. Again, it's gonna be done by eye and by feel. So it's a little bit of trial and error. Take a little bit of stock off, just check and see where you are. Don't overdo anything and you should be good. So here is where I'm at so far, carving it out. It's starting to feel nice in hand now up to where you're going to be holding it. So I'm working my way back. I'm going to leave this end because this is the crucial end where I have to get all my measurements correct. So we'll leave that to last, but I just want to form the handle back to this point here. And then we can start being exact with a hand plane, getting that down to shape. But it's shaping up nicely. I'm doing it all with the saw rasp. I was doing a little bit with the spoke shave, but Sapili is notorious for tear out. You can head in this direction, get a lovely clean shaving, move in a little bit, still head in this direction, and all of a sudden get tear out. And you need to go back this direction. It can be just a nightmare, but the saw rasp is doing a lovely job on it. Be a lot of sanding when I'm finished, but uh, you get a nice uh, no tear out finish from the saw rasp and you remove uh, material pretty quickly. Now, 
The one little issue I'm having, and I knew this was going to be the case, but this is part of the design as well, is that you're going to see some of the ash top and bottom as I curve this over. Now, I knew that was going to be the case, but I thought a nice little white line, top and bottom, starting from here, maybe ending here. So it's fading in and fading back out again. So it's just keeping those even top and bottom on both sides. That's requiring a little bit of work. Um, it doesn't have to be 100% perfect, but I want to get it as close as I possibly can. Again, this is handmade, it's hand carved. It should have a handmade look to it. It's not done on a CNC machine, but as long as it's nice and straight and extremely comfortable to use and good and strong, that's all that matters. So. I'm going to get on now and work this more with the saw rasp. I have the end to shape as well. And when I'm getting through that, I'll show you guys. It's just a lot of carving. Take your time, check with your hand. And when you're getting close, slow down and then you can finish it off with sandpaper. But again, it's just all done by hand, eye and feel. Okay guys, a little progress update for you where I'm at. I have it almost carved now, with a little bit of blending in just to get the curves fading out to the, towards the end, but it's nice and hand, really comfortable down here. And one bit of tip I will give you, if you want to get something feeling nice and hand, it's the same way when I do the guitar necks, is use your hand with the sandpaper in it and rub it up and down. So you're putting the actual shape of your hand into the piece as you're going. So when you grab it then, it's gonna feel really nice in hand. And it's kind of down this way is where it's gonna be held. So it's gotta feel good there. So it's tapering back nicely. Now we're getting to the business end. So I just notched this little piece on the bandsaw, the same as what we have here. So I wanna get this fitting now. So I'm a little bit wide done that on purpose. So we're gonna take the hand plane now and just skim down, take a few shavings from either side, make sure that we're even until this sits in nicely. And then we have to get the auto tiller as well. That has to sit about there. So I have to thickness this section down as well. So let's do that. Okay, so just a case of a little bit of hand planing. Do a little bit either side and we'll keep checking as we go. Okay guys, so I have the tiller arm bracket fitting nicely there, so everything is nice and flush. It's nice and seated in there, so that's good to go. A few stainless steel bolts through that and it'll be happy days. Now, the auto tiller, um, this is kind of an aftermarket thing, so it wasn't originally designed to be fit onto this, so you fit these yourself. So as you can see, it really pressed into the timber and the finish, so I don't want to kind of do that. So the fact that this is going to be the one that's going to be used, I might just put a little bit of a recess uh, in here, so, so that sits in nicely. So I haven't marked both sides, so I might just try and take a chisel to this and just put a nice little recess in here if I can. Um, so let's get on and do that. So it's just going to be something I'm going to work down along. It needs to be shallower here than here. So I'm going to take a heavier cut on this side. It's not going to work back to the line that I've cut with the chisel. I've created a little wall with the chisel and we'll just gently remove some material. Okay guys, there we go. 
just a little housing for the auto filler. This has to come on and off. It's not always in place, so no point in beating it on. And having a little slot that it just slots into and lines up with every time is really going to help. Like I said, these are aftermarket parts, but uh, this is a custom piece I'm making, so I can custom fit it while I'm doing it. So it's just going to be nice and easy to take that on and off and it'll always line back up. So there we go, that's the auto tiller uh, bracket now fit. So it's just a bit of sanding now, a little bit of finishing on this, then we can get the finish on it. Guys, there we go, we're all sanded up and everything is fitting nicely. Now, the next thing to do is to drill the holes, but I'm actually going to take this to the boat in order to drill those holes because there's a little bit of adjustment in this bracket up and down. You can kind of change the angle to kind of suit whatever you need. So, I just want to be 100% that I have the angle of this handle coming out to the boat that is uh, exactly where it needs to be. So, I'll take this to the boat. Uh, put this back in place, fix the handle, and when everything is nice and agreed upon, we'll drill these holes. So that's the next job. Right guys, so it's about a week later, and I'm getting back to this tiller now. So I have all the brackets drilled and fit. So I just took it to the boat, made sure everything was lining up, everything was okay, clamped the brackets on and used a sharp brad point bit, using the brackets as a guide to go straight through the timber. So the main tiller bracket is in place and the auto helm bracket actually stays in place permanently so um, that's now drilled as well so that's going to be actually permanently in place and I have some brand new stainless steel bolts to go through this so it's a case of get the finish on this and when the finish is on and all dried up I'll take you guys to the boat and you guys can see it in place for the finish I'm going to use oil we want to kind of maintain the look of the wood you could use a heavy varnish um, this particular oil I'm going to use is Osmo's UV protection oil so it's our outdoor oil this is the 420 and this one does contain biocides so it's anti-fungal anti-algae and anti-mold you will probably have to apply a coat maybe once a year just to keep it looking at its best but um, an oil finish is what was wanted. We want to keep the look of the wood, so we want to let the wood speak for itself. Like I said, you could use a varnish, and a tinted varnish um, would give you even better UV protection, but I want a clear oil finish on this to let the wood really speak for itself. So, without further ado, let's get a coat of this on. It says it takes about 12 hours, but it's quite warm, so it would probably dry a lot quicker than that. Two coats is all is required of this. Um, to give you a good hard wearing finish and like I said it's anti-mold, anti-algae and anti-fungal as well which will be good for the harsh conditions that it's going to be in and as long as it gets an old coat every year or two it should be absolutely perfect. So let's get it on. Okay let's get this on. Now like I said this does contain biocides. There is a 410 version of this that is biocide free which will just give you UV protection but we want maximum protection against mold and that kind of stuff because of the conditions. Now I'm just going to brush this on. I have sanded this up to 120 grit so you don't want to go any more than that if you're using an oil finish because you want that oil to penetrate into the wood and the finer the grit you go to the less penetration you're going to get on whatever product you apply so 120 is perfect for this so let's get it on and this is going to enhance the look of the wood as you can see that already looks fantastic and that's the reason I wanted a clear oil finish is because this is meant to show off the wood. Otherwise, what's the point in using all these nice woods and making a laminate? Like I said, you could use a tinted varnish, you could use a kind of a paint for this, that would give you probably some more protection, but you're not gonna get that beautiful look. It just means it might require a little bit more maintenance, but that looks absolutely fantastic now. So I'm going to brush this on, get it nice and even, let it penetrate into the wood. And I'm going to pay particular attention to make sure that I get it down inside in the screw holes as well. Now the old tiller handle was about 40 years old. The boat is about 40 years old and it's the original one. But moisture got in through those holes. And that's what eventually weakened the wood. So uh, we don't want that. So we'll, we'll get some down inside in those holes as well, just to make sure we seal them up and we stop any mold, but yeah, that looks quite spectacular indeed. And I can see that's soaking in nicely. It's giving a nice satin gloss finish to it. Really nice stuff actually this. 
Okay, so there's the first coat of oil in place. Now it is a kind of a heavy oil. It does penetrate the wood, but it kind of sits like a varnish for all the world. So you really don't need to go too heavy with this stuff. Just a nice light coat. Get all your brush strokes then going in the same direction so that you don't actually see those brush strokes on it. But uh, yeah, it's looking great. It gives that wood that lovely wet look. Um, which is what you want, that kind of varnish look, but it doesn't tint the wood too much. So uh, you're going to get the natural wood colours and you can really see the um, laminate now pop with the different types of wood, which is exactly what I was going for. So it's a pretty hard wearing oil, this stuff. And I think a coat every year should be fine. So the first coat's on, I'll let that dry and I'll get the second coat on and then we'll get to the fit to the boat. But it's looking quite good indeed. Now, I have the workshop door open and I had a fan running there all the time as well, making sure this place is well ventilated. And you want to do that when you're working with varnishes and things like that and oils, especially ones that can contain biocides. You do need to be careful. So yeah, that's it. Pretty happy with how it's turning out. It's going to look really well on the boat. So let that dry and I'll get a second coat on it. Well right, guys, the finish is all on. It has a lovely, nice satin sheen to it. Really nice uh, finish. I'm really happy with how this has turned out. It looks great. It's really highlighted the different um, tones in the different woods. And that Osmo 420, really easy to use. So that's just two nice light coats there now. And it should be fairly well protected. So, nothing to do now but put the brackets back on this, take it to the boat and fit it in place. And uh, here we're just about there. Okay guys, we're on a handheld mode here. Here's a quick shot of the boat in question. Tiller's in place. Richie's pretty happy with it. Looking, Looking well. Back in handheld mode, little shot walking on. And here we go. All done. Nicely in place. Happy days. Okay guys, so there we go, one complete sailboat tiller, one custom handmade one. And happy, really happy with how this turned out. Looks absolutely fantastic. I think it's a big improvement over the old one. And by this time in the video, you guys should have seen this tiller in place on the actual sailboat as well. So I really enjoyed this build. Hopefully you guys did too. Really love working on boats. I would love to actually build a boat someday. That would be like the ultimate woodworking project. But that's it for now guys, I'm gonna get out of here. So if you liked the video, Video, give it a thumbs up that really helps me a lot comments questions below anything you want to know I will get back to you guys I try to answer everybody's comment um, if I can and if you're new here think about hitting that subscribe button and the little bell button so you will get a notification every time I upload a video so that's it for now guys time to get out of here I shall see you in the next video take it easy look after yourselves